Hi, my name is Steve Young. I'm a product specialist at Astronics Test Systems. Uh, and welcome to another short video that tries to answer some of the more frequent questions I get asked uh, either when I'm out performing training or in my customer service role. Can you explain what guarding is and how it works? So yes, we can. So um, let's take a look at what we have. So in our accessory pack will be a training board. And on that training board, we have two devices, U7 and U8. Uh, if we just zoom in a little bit, we can take a look at those devices. Uh, and these are transceivers, optal transceivers. So it, it means they can transmit and receive. So they, they, they work in both directions. Okay. So if you take a quick, a quick look at the spec, uh, here's the spec, here we see um, two, four, fives, an optimal optal bus transceiver with tri-state outputs. So when it says tri-state, it means that it can be turned off and the buses can be disabled. Um, and as you can see, there's a direction pin and an output enable pin. And then we have buses A and buses B. Okay, so looking at our functional table just below, we can see that if there's a low, on the output enable pin, then you're free to use the buses. And if the output enable pin is high, the buses go into isolation. So the direction pin, if it's low, means the, the buses will move data between B and A. And if the direction pin is high, then the, the bus direction is A to B. So if we look at our tutorial board, Here's the schematic of our tut tutorial board. And we'll see that U7 is biased in one direction. The, uh, the direction pin is pulled high, which means it's transmitting only in A to B. The direction is A to B. Our U8 is connected to it. So the A bus is connected to the B bus. So there is a conflict there. So we, there's a, a potential conflict there. And we could also see here that we have some logic that biases that pin low, which means that it's always traveling from B to A. The data is being pushed from B to A. And as you can see, the, the B channel has pull-ups attached to it. So these are all ones. So those ones will always appear on the output pins A. So if we're trying to test U7, there may be conflict with data that exists on that bus at power up. Okay. So to do that, we need to add a guard. And the guard will be attached to the output enable pin on U8 to disable the buses while we're testing U7. So how does that look in practice? So here we have our tutorial board. And if we click on U8 and we, and we attach our clip to U8, we'll see that it passes as expected. Now, if, if we click on U7, this is the device that, that is being affected by the bias on U8. So if we simply click on that device and we attach our clip, We'll, we'll see that it, it pops up an error. Uh, it's expecting to see a tri-state value, but it's receiving highs. These are the highs that are biased onto that U8 device um, from the pull-up resistors that we saw in the schematic. So, so let's try to add a guard. We'll go to our properties, and we'll go to our guard channel, and we simply click add. Uh, we use guard one. We know that the guard pin needs a high. We'll add it to U8 pin 19. And there's our guard added. So now we can go back to our device. We can click on the device. And now it's telling us to add a guard. So we simply connect the guard to the correct pin. And now 
our device starts testing and there's our functional test passed. So uh, that is the theory of guarding. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Um, and thank you for watching. Yeah.